Hey everybody and welcome back to the studio for another Bully Paints video. Um, today I have something really very special um, which uh, hopefully it will focus on uh, is the new Ogryn bust by my friend Alfonso Girardes. Uh, did his non-metallic metal course on the weekend and we got the, the first kind of nab of this amazing sculpt. Um, Alfonso is one of my favourite sculptors because he sculpts miniatures with a painter's eye um, and I I'm so excited about painting this. I took a day off yesterday, to, uh, today, sorry, to recover from the painting course, uh, which was amazing, by the way. Highly recommend it. Um, still don't know anything about non-metallic metal, but I'll learn. Um, <coughs> I was so excited about painting it, I thought I'd um, give it a black today. Uh, and this is a piece that is, in every way, shape, and form, ideal for an airbrushed artist to paint. And I thought I would show you a step-by-step -step work through on how I actually build up skin textures. Um, and play about with this miniature so um, it's going to be a long vi a very long video or a series of videos as normal um, so without further ado I suppose let's get started so um, the first color I've so the first thing I've done is I have uh, uh, primed it with uh, Vallejo surface primer and I've just primed it black um, the next thing we'll do is uh, scale 75 African shadow which is scale 75 color number 24 this is an amazing amazing deep shadow color love it great for stubble and beards and anything like that just trying a new camera setup appreciate it. it's on a slight angle to my working but it's more comfortable for me to paint that way um so uh using a harder and steambeck infinity with a 0.15 needle um and running at 24 psi through the compressor and then i've dialed it down to about 18 um, we're doing the hand test, you can see I've already done it, but the hand test will show you that the paint is perfectly mixed. Um, and what I'm going to do now is prime the, is go over the priming of the whole miniature with this uh, brilliant colour. But I'm going to do it nice and thin because it's a, it's a very opaque colour and I want some of, some of the black to show through. I'm going to do all under the hair as well because the hair is stubble so if I do the skin through it uh, when I paint the stubble on later it'll be the skin tones will be visible through the the hair which is again more realistic now not this this is a particularly realistic bust it's a an ogryn a badass looking ogryn smoking a cigar uh, but it's still nice to kind of keep the bounds of reality when you're doing skin This colour goes on quite strong and then it dries because it's a super matte, it dries really kind of invisible. It's lovely. Okay, so now I've done the main recesses, I'm gonna just use the airbrush to pick out the raised areas. clean to change colour. If you've watched my previous videos you'll know how I go about doing this. He's nicely just naturally drying while I'm cleaning up. 
It's snowing outside today. The shed is not well, the studio or the log cabin or whatever you want to call it is nice and warm. Um, and the dehumidifiers run on timers overnight, so it's uh, warm and dry in here. But it still takes a little while for paint to dry at this time of year. <coughs> Okay, so uh, the next colour I am going to use is um, a, a pinker colour, and I'm going to use uh, Indian Shadow, which is another one of on the scale 75 colours, and it is number 23. This one's a bit gunky, so I've got to clean this out before I attempt to stick my uh, stick it into my airbrush. We don't want any crap from a congealed bit of paint going into the airbrush. I love scale 75 paints, as anybody who regularly watches the channel knows. But they do have their challenges like everything else. So the paint's in. Phileo airbrush thinners. As you can see, I use a mix of brands of stuff. These are just personal preference. This is just stuff that I have found that I prefer over all the other products on the marketplace. Nice thin consistency. This is going to be a trial and error piece as we go along, so I'm thinking of doing some... Uh, oh, hello. Well, that's never happened before. Uh -huh. There you go. Oh, we have a blocked needle. Real time. There must have been a big lump of shit in there. Let's clean that up. Look at that. Sometimes even the people that really know what they're doing have an airbrush drama. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave that in. I'm not going to edit that out, I'm not going to refilm this video start, I'm going to leave it and show you what you do, and let's do it real time. Okay, so uh, I want to see what it was that caused that in the airbrush, um, so I'm going to battle strip the airbrush. I'm going to take the needle out from the back, I'm going to leave the trigger assembly in, I'm going to take the front nozzle out, I'm going to get a... Uh, let's go for something small get a quick dental cleaning brush I just want to see what's in there okay well that chised out the end so that looks pretty clean and that looks pretty clean in there I'm guessing we had a paint particle or something in here can't see anything that would be an obvious problem to cause that this is gonna be a nice and quick one then uh, dump the needle in the warm soapy water, just give the needle a, a rear draw, just check the needle. Won't focus. Focus. Okay, needle's fine. Oh, we like a bit of drama. Put it back together again. Good airflow. Okay, so that is cleared, whatever it was that caused that problem. Let's rack it and remix it. thick paint I imagine even though I was careful uh, on the weekend I did tell uh, some of the guys on the course that I was helping with their airbrushes never to put paint directly into the uh, the paint caddy because you'll end up putting shit into your paint caddy and uh, there you go guys there's living proof of my advice and the fact that I don't follow it blow that water out I'm going to switch from water to paint. 
Okay, so on the hand test we can see this paint's thinner. So I'm going to dial the pressure down on the fine adjust. And we want to go back to a nice fine coverage. Okay, right then, let's continue. So what I'm going to do now is just generally whack over the whole model in the red, but in a circular motion. This is going to pick out the raised areas, but leave the larger recesses. It doesn't matter if the red spreads, I'd quite like it to because I want that tint in there. Okay. Lovely. Then dump out again. in the background is just me back flushing the airbrush just to get any cleaning fluid or hot water out of it. I'm just blowing it through now so the last of the water is coming out. Give it a pat dry and then we can put it down. Okay so the next colour I'm going to go for and this, this is quite a prescriptive process to be honest the next colour I'm going to go for is scale 75 pink flesh which is colour number 21. Um, And this time I'm going to work a lot heavier on one side of the miniature than I am on the other and the reason will become apparent later on but I don't want this to be quite a heavily shaded miniature. Oh wow this paint's bad. This is my uh, spare. I just bought the, all this stuff back from when I went to the course and I've obviously got my old and new paints mixed up and this is basically claggy and crap pink flesh. So. Let's just grab a new one. Okay. So, oh, scale seventy five. Great paints. Pain in the ass to work with. Okay, so I'm going to do this the other way with the paintbrush. What I've done is just dip the paintbrush and drop the paint into the can rather than trying to squeeze any crap through. Let's get some thinners in there. Skin, when you're doing a bust like this, is all about layers. In fact, it's it's just entirely about layers. So you want to be putting layers of texture, layers of tone, layers of colour. You want to be going back over the top of each other, layer after layer after layer. You're going to paint light, paint dark, paint light, paint dark again. Okay, so... Okay. 
good coverage using our rule of thumb this is uh, a little thinner so I want it to be a little bit a little bit lower pressure again can't see that okay let's focus on the mini okay so we're going to start with where I want to be light first okay and we're going to start from the top of the miniature we're going to work our way around and down battling with this paint a bit today. Been quite slapdash with it at this point. You see those spots that are coming out? That's where I've got crap caught in the airbrush. But actually, on skin, that creates texture, and I'm not bothered about that at all. Right. We can see that the shadow is already starting to form in the skin. We're leaving some quite good contrast on there. So now what I'm going to do is leave. That colour is now empty. You can hear it, it finished and flushed through. <coughs> what I'm going to do is leave that colour in the airbrush. Because we're going to go over it again in a little while. With the pink flesh again. I'm going to just put a bit out on the table. I'm going to ferry it in with the caddy, into the caddy with my brush because then I can check that there's no particles of shite in it, which is what was clearly causing me the problems earlier on. Okay. Yeah, that looks all right. Let's get that particle of shite out. Okay. Um, what we're going to do now is a bit of spattering, and this is always good fun, and a bit, a bit batshit crazy. You can use your airbrush for this. I prefer not to. I prefer the feeling of, of getting it on my hands and, and knowing that I'm doing it. So I'm going to take uh, a brush such as... It's no good. That should should be okay. I thought. Let's look and see. Hmm. It's going to take a pop, and we're going to do some different colours now of ink and spatter them with some inks for a bit of texture into a skin. So skin contains reds, blues, and greens. 
and then members of those colours, so members of the family of those colours. Okay, so you can see me just splattering there. I am, ooh, I just put my hand in paint. Let's clean that off before I end up handling the miniature. Okay, I'm going to completely randomly, completely out of my control, just splatter this miniature. All over. And what I'm doing... is just looking for spots of texture. bit more red ink I think See that? Looks a bit like a cartoon, one of the old pixelated cartoons. That's actually what we're looking for, which is good. Okay, uh, the next ink I will grab randomly down is going to be, please don't be a pearlescent. Okay, that's a pearlescent, that's no good to me. We'll use a green. Uh, these are Dela uh, Dela Rally. Uh, Artist sinks, uh, and this is sap green. The other one was vermilion. Just gonna use a different brush now, which will give a slightly different spatter effect. Okay, and we're just gonna carry on with the spattering. bold and playful with these it doesn't really matter you're not gonna do any real harm so you've got big spots up here that's no problem at all it's the kind of stuff I'm looking for some people might look at that and freak out especially those on the arms and the shoulders I don't at all Part of the process and it's what we want a bit of texture in the skin what I am going to do now is dry that with the airbrush before I put the blues on which means I'm going to just rack the airbrush pressure back up to 22 I'm just putting air through I'm just going to give it a blow being careful not to blow the drops so we want to do it from a distance bit of irregularity in the drops is fine because skin has irregular blemishes, bumps and marks. But we don't want to be blowing the colour. Into different shapes that are too erratic. Okay, so that's the red and the green done. Let's get some blue on here. For this we're going to use uh, Dela Rowney Process Cyan or Cyan, I don't know how you pronounce it. It's a very vivid blue. Uh, right, and I'm also going to use some uh, dark blue from Dark Star. Which is one of the. Oh, actually, I just grabbed the purple, but the purple's just as good. I just want some of the blue families that are a bit darker in here. Okay, so let's 
a cracking on the blue. We've got a bit less blue than we've had of the other colours. remove a big spot that randomly landed right smack on his eyebrow and on his nose because that although I said it needs to be random that's not going to help my paint job so just use a wet brush to do that and now we're going to flick some purple on okay purple's on and then the last we want are some browns and for that I would recommend using any of the army painter uh, tones or quick shades whatever they're called uh, and you can use soft tone or dark tone strong tones tends to be a bit of a waste of time for skin texturing because um, it's just a bit in the middle of the two but I'm going to go for the sepia colored soft tone here So what we are left with is a very spotty bust. Not something that anybody would normally associate with miniature painting. Okay, so you can see as I turn him around, focus. So turn him around, he's all spotty and dappled. Okay. We are gonna Colour works. Okay, so I'm just going to go over it again now with the just air just to dry any of these spots. Obviously, they're inks, so they're going to be dominant over a, a matte colour. If they're wet, they'll leach or bleed. Okay, and then using the airbrush, I am going to put a filter over the top. So there we can see that the first filter of the top cover has already taken out an awful lot of the dappling and the spotting. 
but it's left it visible. So what we're starting to do is to build up that translucency that is skin, full of blemishes and marks and knocks. Okay, so uh, using the Dark Star Blue ink, I think. Where are my brushes? I spent the morning unpacking all my stuff from the painting course yesterday. You'd think I'd know where it was, wouldn't you? Okay. These are my old Scott 70. No, sorry, these are all my old Windsor and Newtons for this. And. Using the Dark Star Blue ink, which actually is lighter than I thought it was going to be, so we're not going to use the Dark Star Blue ink. Darn it, it's a very posh sound. Let's look at Garnet. Garnet's a lovely colour for this. Okay, so we're just going to Load our brush up with some ink and we're going to just spider's web trace just some veins on this dude. What I'm doing is just literally picking out veins in some areas that might be interesting to see veins. And I know this could look quite extreme. It is quite extreme in fact. But remember this is going to be subdermal again. So these are going to be covered by successive layers of airbrush painting. Always remember to get some veins in on the temples. And on the neck area. Okay, so these are going to be our deep veins, and again, don't freak out, we're going to cover them. <clears throat> now we want to take some of that purple ink, and just put just a few more.
Sorry, I was doing that off camera, wasn't I again? Bad bully. Okay. So there's some quite strong, strong veins on there, mixtures of colours. And again, I appreciate that it, currently this is looking ropey. Um, and we're going to do anything else. Maybe a couple of blues. Just mixing some purple ink in with that blue, just to just to give us a bit of variety, a slightly lighter lighter vein. Don't forget that veins often cross over each other at different lengths, different heights. Wiggly. Okay, so that's enough. Too much of a good thing and all that. Oh, now we're going to need some more basic flesh, sorry some more pink flesh and we can get ourselves a bit more fun Remember what I said at the very beginning about layers of texture. Um, that's what we're creating now. Now all of that lovely shading is starting to, to be lost by these layers and that's perfectly normal. We're going to go back in and put that, put that back in later. But as for now, we just want to be building details into the skin which are barely perceptible to the eye later on. Just aids realism. Okay, so I've got a nice thin filter colour now. Let's just dry off that one bit of quite deep ink there. And you see that it's settled in that crease. Right, let's bring this sucker to life. Okay, so we're working now on fading in these veins. Okay, so 
so as we can see they've softened considerably now now I'm going to go back in and I'm just going to put some of that red back in not the very dark shadow but the Indian shadow because I want the one side of the face to have more well considerably more depth to it Okay, so I've got some Indian shadow back in here, some thinners, and let's give this a really good bash because this was that nasty thick colour last time that clogged us a bit. So we don't have that problem again. If we do, let's move the model out of the way just in case. Okay, so this is thin, as we can see. So we'll check on the hand. We want a nice soft glaze with this now. And what I'm going to do is start working back in those recesses with the red. And at this point we can see that a lot of the veins are nicely fading out to nothing. Just the barest imperceptible trace of them is left. And that's what we want.
Okay. So there I have focused on raising his eyes. Uh, back to being quite deep, focusing on the mouth and then covering over a lot of that basic flesh, adding in depth again. And now we're going to work back and we're going to put the lights back in again. Or the first of many, many lights. But we'll do that. I oh, know we've still got a bit of time. I should say we'll do that in part two, but we've still got a bit of time. So before I go to part two, I can just get the next lights back on this dude. <laughs> okay, so we've been dunk cleaned and we're ready to go with the next colour. And we're going to go back to the scale 75 basic flesh again. Uh, sorry, pink flesh again. Like slightly pinkier hue. And then from there we'll move on to the old stalwart that is basic flesh. Now obviously none of this replaces the brushwork we're going to have to do later. In all good miniature painting you, you know, need to spend time with a brush giving a miniature some love. <coughs> but what it does do is speed the process up exponentially and it allows you to add a whole different level of depth than you'd be able to get with a brush. You simply could not do this veining in the same way with a brush. You could do it in extremely laborious ways and achieve the same effect or a very similar effect but it would take three or four times the amount of time. Sign. That means that there probably was another big bit of shite in that. There it is. Oh, I don't know. Cleared the blockage, and now we're going to just focus on putting the lights back in again. nice Got a nice contrast from light to dark around here I want there to be some quite extreme shadows okay so by that stage we just finished applying scale 75 pink flesh 
to the bust over the top of all that veining and the spotting and everything that we did which looks great and now what we're going to do is do a little bit more spattering not a lot more just a little bit more spattering but specifically with brown <laughs> if you think about your skin um, the most visible kind of moles and marks that you've got are all obviously brown occasionally you get the red the odd red blemish or uh, maybe a black spot but really they're mostly brown so I'm going to just use that scale 70 sorry that army painter soft tone I'm going to take the worst of it off and I'm just going to quickly spatter him again And this is totally random, which is actually part of the appeal for me, because I find that if you try and consider where you're going to put moles and blemishes, they never look organic. Again, remember that this is not the final layer of skin we've got loads more layers of airbrush work to put on top of the skin beauty spot and blemish. Okay, let's get all that crap off my hand. And then peeps, at this point I'm going to uh, end part one because I need a cup of coffee and a pee and I'll be back shortly, almost in no time at all in your world, with part two. Thanks very much for watching, hope you found it interesting so far. Um, I would love your comments please, um, the comments are really why I do it. Um, I love to know that at least it's helping people or people are finding it interesting. Let's have a look at this fella now. So you see all those veins now, you probably can't even see them, I'll try and bring them in a bit closer. See all these veins here now? They're really, really subtly under the skin, it's, along with all the spattering and the detailing. This is obviously the fresh spatter, and that will get covered again. All those veins that look so stark and so horrible, now look at them. It's amazing, isn't it? We're left with tiny tracery veins just under the skin. Look at the temples. See the veins on the temples under the skin? Look at that. Lovely. Okay. See you all soon. Cheers, guys. Bye.